Today I'm going to be trying out these Sennelier L'Aquarelle watercolors. Now I've never tried any Sennelier watercolors before, but I've tried many other brands. So I was really intrigued when I saw this on Amazon. Now I did get this on sale, but it says that it has 12 half pans and you get six for free. I'll go ahead and link it down below, but I'm not going to put any prices or anything because as you guys probably know, prices fluctuates so much on Amazon, but I was really intrigued that you get six free colors. Now, these are the professional Sennelier uh, watercolors. It says that they are honey-based and luminous and rich color. So let's just get right in and check them out. Now, on the back of the packaging here, it says the honey used in L'Aquarelle Sennelier acts not only as a preservative, but also as an additive, bestowing incomparable brilliance and smoothness to the paint. Always striving for excellence, Sennelier has revamped its watercolor formula, increasing the amount of honey to reinforce the longevity, radiance, and luminosity of its colors. True to Sennelier's roots, the color palette remains that of the Impressionists, and the paint is, as always, made in France using traditional methods. So that's kind of cool. Now I have to say I really like this sleek matte black packaging. And then on the bottom you have like your little thumb holder here. Although I don't know how many people actually use that. And then we're just going to go ahead and open it up. Now that doesn't lay completely flat. But this one does. So... I don't know if you can like somehow fix that or bend that, but if you're gonna put water in here, then your color's all gonna like kind of run down there. So, I mean, I don't wanna bend it too much, but maybe you could fix that. Or I wonder if you could even take the pin out, but usually if you just, it's metal, like a metal tin. So I'm wondering if you just kind of like pull it a little bit, you could fix that. But these are the colors that come in it. And this is kind of interesting that it comes with like this little, like plastic insert here of all the color names. So we've got lemon yellow, French vermilion, alizarin crimson, carmine, dioxazine purple, ultramarine deep, phalo cyanine blue, forest green, phalo green light, burnt sienna, Payne's gray, and warm sepia. And I'm pretty sure these must be the 12 colors that come in the 12 set here. And then these are our six free colors. So we get Naples Yellow Deep, Bright Red, Venetian Red, Ceneris Blue, Raw Umber, and Ivory Black. And it's got some numbers here like 566, 619, Series 1, and some information. But I'll have more information on the pigments and the light fast and all that when I do the swatching. I'll kind of let you guys know about that. I wonder if this comes out or is this okay it does come off but you can still like have it you know as a reference oh it says use this cover to protect your paints and preserve their color name so I guess once you're done painting you could put this um, back on but I would imagine it would get the back of it quite dirty so usually I, I like to leave my swatch sheets off to the side but especially things like watercolor I always like to make my own swatches because you know, depending what paper you're using, um, they always tend to look a little bit different. And this is what the pans look like. And I do have to say the colors do look nice and bright in the pans. However, they look like traditional cheaper paints, like just by looking at them, like, I don't know if you guys can see here, sort of how it's got that oval top, like it doesn't look, you know, poured in naturally or anything. Um, let me get one out here if I can. And do they come right out? Yeah, they fall right out of these. But it does have some information here. So 635, that's the number that is associated with it. And it just says Sennelier. It doesn't have any pigment information. But I mean, just first looks at this. Now I haven't swatched them or tried them, but this looks like a cheaper kind of paint. Um, so yeah, actually, I do have a palette from Medina that is very close to this. So let me go get that and we'll just compare the two. So this is my Medine watercolor. Now this is not student grade or anything. This is just, you know, generic watercolors. These are not going to be light fast or anything. But I couldn't, you know, ignore the similarity between this palette and this palette. So it's the same on the front, except this is matte black and this is like a shinier blue. Um, on the back, this has the little thumb thing. And this one also has the same thumb thing. And it looks like they've used almost the exact same palette. 
So let's just open them both up. Now, the thing that I like about this, and these are my swatches, I've just glued them to the top here, but that top part lays flat. And now you can kind of see the difference that this one doesn't. Now, I think if I sort of lift this up, yeah, this has the same, like same little wells in it. So it's got the four wells. And then if we pull this open, now the only thing is this lays a little more flat, but that's fine because I don't really typically use like the mixing spaces in these, but look at the same pans. Like these have the same sort of like your generic chalky paint. Like it's, it's that rounded, like, let me get this one out here. So you can see it's like the same rounded. Now I'm sure the formula and like the way they re-wet is going to be so much better, obviously. But it just reminded me so much of these old paints that I had to pull them out and kind of compare the two. Now these ones from the Medine don't have any information on them at all. But I did take a little sticker from the packaging and a piece of tape and stick it on there so I'd know what color that is. But I just kind of wanted to show you guys the difference. Now if you ended up having a palette like this that you like better than it lays flatter you could always take these little half pans out and put them into your other palette so that's an option as well but I think I'm just gonna jump right in and start swatching these out and playing with them a little bit then I'll probably do an artwork as always and then I'll come back with like my full review once I've actually used these enough that I can give you know a better review of them now, I was a little worried how these paints would re-wet, but let me just tell you, they re-wet so easily. You honestly only needed like one or two little swipes to get so much pigment off of them, so I was very happy to see that. Now, I had to go digging a little bit on their website to get the pigment information and their light fast information, so I'm just going to go over that in this voiceover here while you watch me swatch them out. Now, it's a little confusing the way they label their light fastness, but it does say that they conform to the ASTM standards, but they label their watercolors as either a 1, 2, or 3 light fastness, but a 1 actually means a 3 star in the ASTM, a 2 means a 2 star, and a 3 means a 1 star. So it's a little confusing. I don't know why they did it like that. So for the first swatch, it's Lemon Yellow 501. It's a transparent color, a light fastness of 2, and the pigment is PY3. The next one is French Vermilion. It's opaque, a light fastness of 3, and the pigment is PR242. Then we have Alizarin Crimson, transparent color, a light fastness of two, and its pigments are PR209, PY83, and PR179. And this alizarin crimson is a much different color than I have from any of my other alizarin crimsons. Then we have dioxazine purple, 917. It says it's a transparent color, a light fastness of one, which was just average, and it's PV23. Then we have ultramarine deep, 315. It's a transparent light fastness of 3 and it's PB29. Then we have phalo cyanine blue which I think is sort of like a phalo blue green shade maybe. It's number 326. A light fastness of 2. Transparent and it's PB15 and PB3. Then we have forest green 899 and I quite like this color. It's semi-transparent a light fastness of 3, and it's PBK7, PG7, and PY42. So it's got a few different colors in there. Then we have Phalo Green Light, 805, transparent. It's a light fastness of 2, and it's PG7 and PY153. Then we have Burnt Sienna. It's a transparent color, light fastness of 3, and it's PBR7. Haynes Gray, 705. It's a semi-transparent, light fastness of 3, and it's got PV19, PB15, PB1, PBK7. So this one has a lot of different colors in it, which is really interesting. Then we have Warm Sepia, 440. It's semi-transparent, light fastness of 3, and it's PBR7 and PBK7. Then for the six free colors that came with this set, we have Naples Yellow Deep, 566. 
It is a opaque color, light fastness of three, and it's PBR24. Then we have this bright red 619. It's semi-transparent, and the light fastness is actually not rated. And then it says the pigment number is not rated as well. So it looks like a cadmium red, maybe cadmium red hue type color, but I'm surprised to see that the pigment number here is listed as not rated as well. So if anybody has any information about this bright red color, please let me know. Then we have Venetian red 623. It's opaque, light fastness of three, and it's a PR101. Then we have Cinerous Blue, 344, opaque, a light fastness of two, and it's PB15, PB3, and PW4. Then we have Raw Umber, 205, it's transparent, light fastness of three, and it's PBR7. The last one that we have here is Lamp Black, 753. It's semi-transparent, a light fastness of three, and it's made up of PBK9 and PY43. I chose this piece of cake for the artwork today because I wanted to use a lot of colors in this set and this cake has a lot of bright colors in it and I actually managed to use pretty much all of the colors except for a few of them in this set. Now this painting will be available over on my Patreon in real time if you're interested in that. I will go ahead and link that down below. But first off, I just want to say these paints re-wetted like a dream. I really only need to take my brush into each pan maybe once or twice and the pigment payoff was huge. I was really impressed with these paints. They really packed a punch. Now, when I'm trying out new paints, I like to try a lot of different techniques. So we did wet on wet in this, wet on dry, some dry brushing, some lifting. I went on top with gouache. I threw just about everything at these paints and they passed with flying colors. I was really impressed with them. Now, one thing I have to say, even though these paints are so pigmented and they pack a punch, they were really easy to lift off this paper as well because you're gonna see at some points I'm doing some splatters and then I go around and dab them up on the paper and even though they've been on the paper for probably a minute, they lift it up really well. And at the end, you're gonna see me going into the strawberry and lifting up some more details onto the strawberry to create some of those little lines and they did a wonderful job doing that as well. I'm just really impressed with these paints. Now, the only color in here I'm not impressed with is that bright red, 619. And I mean, I'm just paying so much for these paints. I don't want there to be a non-light fast paint in there. And Sennelier's whole thing is they are professional, they're light fast, you know, they're a good brand. So if I'm paying a lot for these paints, I wanna be able to use every color that's in the set. Now, I was able to take the French Vermilion and the Carmine, which is a warm orangey red and a cool pinky red, and I mixed those together and got a color that was pretty close to that bright red, but I don't want to have to jump through hoops to get my professional supplies to work for me. So what I might end up doing is just taking that bright red right out of there, and I might go ahead and taking some other red from one of my other sets that is light fast and replacing it. Or I might replace it with a completely different color because I feel like having four reds in this set is a little bit much. Even though the Alizarin Crimson is, I don't know if I would call that a red, it's almost like a rusty brown red, which is a pretty unique color even though I didn't use it in this piece. I do like that a lot of the colors in this set are different than the normal colors, like the phalo green light. I would call that a sap green, but it's almost like an apple green. Like it's a really nice light green color, but a lot of the lighter green colors that you get in sets lean a little bit more yellow. So I really like that. The forest green, it's a very like dark bluish purple. I really like that color. The burnt sienna is unique in here because it's a little bit more of an orangey. Um, burnt sienna whereas some brands are a little bit more reddish toned. The blues in this set are really well but I feel like again they didn't need to add the cinerous blue which is more of a cerulean blue and the phalo blue. They're pretty close so I feel like just adding one of those colors in they could have given us a different color. The venetian red is close to the alizarin crimson except venetian red leans a little bit more brown, I would say. I really liked the Payne's Gray in this set because it acted the way I use neutral tint. So I use my neutral tint to darken a lot of colors because it's got blue in it and it's got some red and purple in it. You can really mix it with 
most every color and this paint gray worked this way as well now it does lean a little bit more blue but i used this color to mix into all of the fruit and i feel like it did a pretty good job and then I used the darker umber colors to mix in with the cake colors. And you're going to notice at the beginning, the cake was a little bit too light. So once I started getting some of the darker values in the fruit, I was able to come back and realize I really needed to darken up that front part of the cake. And sometimes it's hard to judge our values like that when we don't have our darkest darks in. So at the time, it might look right to you. But once you get some of those darker colors in, you're going to realize you need to go darker in other areas. And then I wanted to see how gouache would layer on top of this. So I did go in to some of the icing part and a little bit on the fruit and just create some little stark highlights here and there. And the gouache worked exceptionally well on this watercolor like it does with most. But I wanted to see if it was really going to stand out on top or if it was going to mix in with the colors quite a bit and I actually was able to do both. I used the gouache a little bit more watered down, mixed it on top of the cherry to give some of that illusion of the highlight on the cherry and then some areas on the blueberries and the icing I went in a little bit more concentrated with the white and I'm pretty happy overall how this piece turned out. I'm pretty happy with my purchase with the Sennelier paint and I would say yes, I would recommend them. However, I don't know if I would say go ahead and purchase this set in particular. I feel like there's a lot of colors in this set that are very similar that they could have switched out some colors. Now, if you saw the swatches and you liked all of the colors and you would use them all, then go ahead. Yes, this is absolutely worth it. But I would say maybe just get the 12 set and then you know, add colors that you would want on because I feel like those four reds, those three blues, the warm sepia and the raw sepia are pretty close. I mean, having the paints gray and the ivory black, I don't really use black that much. So I would have rather had just the paints gray and then I could mix in, you know, some of that burnt sienna and ultramarine deep with that to get more of a black color. So I feel like they could have done some better color choices here. However, I absolutely love these paints and will certainly be using them again in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you see my other videos and reviews coming out. And thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.